Hi, I'm Carl Capadia. I'm an interventional cardiologist and director of the Valve Clinic and Transcatheter Aortic Valve Replacement Program at St. Alphonsus Heart Institute. So TAVR refers to Transcatheter Aortic Valve Replacement. It's novel technology that's uh, been around for a few years uh, and was FDA approved in uh, 2011. And it's basically a minimally invasive way of replacing someone's aortic valve instead of doing open heart surgery. This has actually been one of the biggest uh, breaking innovations in uh, the field of cardiovascular medicine in uh, the last 10 or 20 years. The heart is a, a large pump that's designed to pump blood and circulate blood with oxygen to the body. Uh, inside the heart there are four valves. One of the four valves is known as the aortic valve. As one gets older, calcium deposits in the leaflets of that aortic valve and as a result of that the valve leaflets become stiff and don't open as well and so the heart's not able to pump blood to the body and that's typically what leads to uh, patients experiencing the symptoms. Uh, there's no uh, big incision in the chest and typically this procedure is done with a very small incision in the groin through that sheath we place a plastic catheter and at the very end of that is uh, bioprosthetic, so uh, an artificial heart valve. And that catheter is used to deliver that valve inside the heart and then uh, position it inside the heart and then uh, deploy the valve in place of the old diseased aortic valve. And that's essentially what this procedure involves. So there's typically in over 95% of cases, no cuts or incisions made in the chest. Betty is a very pleasant 90-year-old who uh, recently moved to uh, uh, Boise from uh, California. So then, lo and behold, here I am having a taver, which I didn't even had, had even heard about until I got here and found out about it. We thought that she was at very high risk for open-heart surgery, and uh, she was a suitable candidate for TAVR. I didn't feel like I'd had anything happen. In fact, I wasn't even sure that they'd done the procedure because I have no big scar. My chest wasn't cut open, you know, and, and all that, and so. I'm extremely pleased that uh, TAVR was available and that I was able to take advantage of it. So Jerry is also a, another one of my very pleasant patients who was referred to me by his primary care provider. And uh, he came to me with a history of actually uh, uh, fainting after uh, mowing his lawn. I was uh, mowing the lawn and went in and rested in the garage and then went back out and did it again. And when I came back in, I woke up on the floor. Uh, we did an ultrasound of his heart and that confirmed that he had severe aortic stenosis and he was clearly experiencing symptoms like shortness of breath with minimal walking. Uh, a larger percentage of patients are now being treated and once this procedure is done, uh, patients have dramatic improvement in their symptoms. Their shortness of breath uh, almost goes away uh, immediately. Uh, they have more energy. They're able to do things they could previously not do. And their lifespan uh, dramatically improves as a result of that. And after I've had it, I can walk further. I have more energy and uh, I feel better. In an ideal case scenario where things go according to plan, patients can expect to have a very short hospital stay, even uh, of just 24 hours, which is actually what we've accomplished in over 90% of our cases so far. This device has iterated or been modified to make it safer, make the procedure simpler, and as a result of that, have a very short hospital stay uh, and uh, lead to very good outcomes with a very low complication rate uh, when compared with traditional open heart surgery, which was previously the only option for replacing someone's diseased aortic valve. It, it may not necessarily be the answer for everyone, but it is uh, an exceptional option. And I was very uh, grateful for him and his expertise, his knowledge, and uh, how he handled things. He's a super doctor. <laughs>